Judy Bloom once said, Librarians save lives by handing the right book at the right time to a kid in need. Librarians really do play an important role in the lives of those who love to read. But what if you had no access to a library or no access to any books or any magazines? Or maybe you couldn't even read. Like, this is just a tragic thing for me to even think about. Today, we are discussing some heroic librarians that filled a gap in a time of great need in the South. Meet you at the table. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Hey, Laura Beth. Hello, hello. Well, I cannot believe how much fun this topic was to research today. Oh, this was a listener suggested topic. So thank you, Susan, for telling us about the Pack Horse Librarians of Kentucky. Um, So you had mentioned that this was a listener topic, and I actually earlier in the year had um, read that book woman of Troublesome Creek. Yes. Which is so fascinating because it's historic fiction. Yes. So I, I listened to that earlier in the year. Yeah. And became a little bit familiar with the Pack Horse Librarians of Kentucky. Okay. I forgot you read that. Is that the, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. So yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I just, these are like the ultimate and steel magnolias. These women are, you're right. You know, I mean, I just aspire to be as strong as these ladies. Do you think you would have been a pack horse librarian? I can only hope. I mean, I don't know. I was very inspired hearing about this. Um, Because libraries, I love the library. For some reason, I've always loved the library and the bookstore. You have. What do you, I just want to ask real quick, what are you reading now? Are you reading anything? I know you are, because you're always always reading. reading. So the question is. And listening. Like, I like to read some books, hold them in my hand. Others, I'll just listen to. Audio books. I um, finished a book on Elon Musk. Oh, really? He's such an unusual strange guy for sure that for some reason i'm fascinated by him so this was an older book like he's done a lot since this book was even written yeah um he progresses pretty fast very quickly um but anyway so i finished a book on him and now i'm rereading a book that i've read before that's just called breath and it um yeah includes a lot of deep breathing exercises and that's, I'm rereading it because I felt like I needed a refresher, particularly on the exercises because there's different ones. I so. need to do that. We need. We all need to be. We doing all need some... to do more deep breathing. Yes, especially in the world we live in. Okay, big sigh. <laughs> Start now. Breathe out. Jump in. Yeah. Well, the Pack Horse Librarians are uh, sealed in history, yeah. and we wanted to give them a platform to share the history makers that they are. So this this program, we've talked about the New Deal that FDR, um, when we talked about the TVA. Exactly. That was part of this New Deal. And there was also something called the Works Progress um, Administration, Administration, which was trying to get people back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, after the Depression, this was in 1933. Um, I read that 40% of Appalachian people were unemployed. I think I read that too. That's a That's huge astounding. amount. Um, and so with this work, Works Progress Administration, most of the jobs that were created were for men. Yeah. And you had a lot of women who, for various and sundry reasons, the men were gone. Either they had left to go get a job some in some other place, the only place they could find a job. Right. Some men had left under the pressure. Sure. Um, Yeah. They just left left their their families. Yeah. So there was a lot of women who were running the home and they didn't have a job. Like, I just can't even wrap my mind around all of that. So um, there had been, in 1913, a woman had tried to get this library program going and it just couldn't get going. Mm. 
Um, so Eleanor Roosevelt, in trying to kind of help cultivate some jobs for women, thought, let's, you know, this, this program failed before, but maybe with some funding, we can get this going. Yes. So it wasn't her idea. Right. But yet she, she rebirthed it. She was an influencer <laughs> at the time exactly. and put it in action. Yeah. So they um, started trying to find women who would be willing to go horseback into these rough conditions to little bitty log homes um, in this mountainous area to try and get books to people. Yes. People that, as you mentioned, were already way behind neighboring states in terms of education electricity yeah the roads were far subpar compared to anything else that were in neighboring states that's right think no road no paved roads no telephones no radios this is the hills (laughs) yeah so yeah so food education jobs everything is more scarce (laughs) in yeah Appalachian. Except for children. Apparently they often would have, you know, several kids and Yeah. Which is helpful if you're, you know, farming or something, but apparently even some of the soil wasn't great for growing food. Like anyway. Yeah. Hard times. Hard, hard times. Yeah. So and obviously in the mix of all that they lacked books. So books were I mean very much something that if they were delivered to the area would have been a hot commodity. Yeah, so and that just makes people better in the sense of you if you know more, you know how to do more, etc. Yeah. So the program um the women had to they were they were going to be paid $28 per month mm-hmm. to make these rounds into the hills to make these deliveries. They were responsible for their own horse or mule. And their own accommodations. I couldn't believe they were responsible for their own horse, but I guess... So sometimes they would rent it from someone else. Yes. Or maybe if they had access to some in the family, someone yeah. who had one. Yeah. Um, but no, he, no company car. No company car. You're not getting paid for mileage. No. It's bring your own horse and, and here's your flat rate for the month. Here's your $28 per month and you got to... Anything that else has to come out of that. Yeah, like exactly. If you need to rent the horse that comes out of that. Exactly. They would be gone for um, usually, you know, about four or five days and hit five or six towns. They would do about 120 miles per week. Gosh, that's a lot. Horseback. Over mountainous terrain, icy creeks, like yeah. all weather conditions, snow, rain, yeah. they're going. Yeah. It almost reminds me, though, of the methodology behind circuit riders, which is of the Methodist denomination, the men that would ride horseback to share the gospel within a certain radius. And they, uh, as well, they, you know, there was a saying that in treacherous weather, there's nothing out today but circuit riders. And, you know, so same (laughs) thing, like, you know, they just rode around on horseback. They weren't delivering a product. They were delivering. But they had their passion. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, um, with this, oh, one other thing that I thought was interesting was the books and magazines and everything that was, th- that all was donations. Right. So the government wasn't providing any of that either. Right. So there was kind of a, a group that was going around to some of the affluent um, people and parent teacher organizations trying to gather resources yes. as best they could to have resources to pull from and then kind of a hub that could organize what was going with each rider right each week yeah yeah the the state of Kentucky was in distress even in terms of the library conditions that they did have i read one statistic that said in 1935 kentucky only circulated one book per capita compared to the american library association standard of five to ten wow so that's again just one more picture of how far behind kentucky was at this time compared to the rest of the nation that's hard to hear 
Um, there was also, I thought this was interesting, a lot of skepticism around this program. Did yes. you read about that? Yes. Um, um, it makes sense. Well, I didn't read skepticism um, towards the program. I read skepticism of the residents on a property as somebody was approaching their property. Okay. Of like, what does this person want? Well, that I'm sure happened. But also just around the program of we need our women staying home. Oh. They don't need to be gone. Okay. That kind of a thing. Yeah. They don't need to be out alone. Okay. A lot of the men had the kind of animosity towards it. Like, what do they need to be doing out yeah. about like that yeah. without any supervision <laughs> kind of a thing? That's hilarious. And those it's wi- also kind of ignorant, but. I was going to say, those librarians wild can get women. pretty wild, you know. <laughs> you got to watch them. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my goodness so um anyhow that i can see and then with the people yes what are, what are you wanting from me right they, they're not used to anybody coming no to them so you must want something or you're gonna try and take my land exactly you're probably coming to rob us if you just fought so you probably i bet they got met with a rifle occasionally, you know, coming up Maybe. on the property. That still happens today <laughs> in certain areas of the South. I thought it was fascinating that, you know, even with delivering these books, you have a lot of people that were illiterate. Okay, so that's a good point, too. There, it was a little over 30% of Kentucky residents were illiterate read at this time so so me, me saying that that was a hot commodity coming in yes and no right they if did you, want to read they, yeah. it wasn't that there was um you know that that they had no interest in that they did want to read that they just didn't know how yeah so there's a couple of things that i think are amazing the bi- b- books that had a lot of pictures were in very much high demand yep because you you know could enjoy that even if you couldn't yes. read. In fact, it might help you a little bit in picking up certain words or something. Yes. And then some of the women would try to do read-alouds occasionally. So maybe, you know, in a more core place like a school yard or something, they might do a read-aloud so the librarian, where people could come. Okay. The librarian herself is yes. reading? Okay. Yes. Wow. Um, and whether or not this is true, I have heard stories of, um, you know, if someone was really sick or in a lot of pain, they may read to them, you know, things like that. Yeah. So definitely a kindness. Yeah. In um, showing love in that way. Yes. To those who couldn't. Um, I also thought it was very cool that in addition to books, there was a lot of, I mean, one of the high demand thing was magazines. Yep. Different journals. Yep. Um, things like that. I've got a list of some of the most popular items that were, okay, you know, really in high demand at that time. Book wise, it was uh, children's books like Robinson Crusoe, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, and Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels. Uh-huh. And I was thinking, isn't that cool to think those still those are titles. classics yep. that, you know, stand the test of time? Yeah. Um, Poetry was often requested. Mm-hmm. That kind of surprised me a little bit. That but surprises I thought that was me. Cool, maybe because um, it's short. Maybe because a lot of poetry is short. Maybe and just gives you like the warm fuzzies. I yeah. guess. But at the top of the list um, for men was magazines like Popular Mechanics. Yep. And for women, the Ladies' Home Journal. Okay. Or Woman's Home Companion. Okay. And that makes sense because they want to know how to make their house run smoother how to do absolutely um and in addition to books and magazines did you read about scrapbooks yes i'm so glad you want to talk about this yes so as you mentioned that these books were resourced by locals you know that they had drawn together books to then bring to these kentucky residents And so in that same vein, there was sort of a collection even along the route, you know, maybe a scrap of a magazine, maybe a recipe, a quilt pattern, a quilt pattern, 
Um, so all these kinds of scrap like pieces, one page here, you know, a little notepad here, formed these scrapbooks. Yeah. And I thought it was so interesting because actually those, the remaining scrapbooks that we have even still today are on display at the FDR Presidential Library. That would be so cool to see. So you can go see that. What an insight into the culture of the time. Yeah. Sort of like the Firefox Museum that we talked about yeah, yeah. several episodes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. Several episodes back. Um, I actually have two recipes that I'm going to offer to our patrons. That's going to be something exclusive to them this month. That's fun. That came out of this time. I've got a recipe for potato cakes Love that you it. would have seen circulating. And I'm not sure if anybody's going to want to take me up on the next one. I've got a recipe for pickled chicken. Okay. Well. Shows you the times, right? Canning, that's as right. we've discussed on here before was essential yeah, for certain time periods. Yeah, you had to make things last, so you had to pickle it. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. How fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you found So that. I'll have those up for our patrons this month. <laughs> okay, so let's just think about if we had the opportunity to put something in the scrapbook. Oh, yeah. What would you want? What would you put in the scrapbook? Or I guess, what would you want in the scrapbook? Okay, Either well, way. it's got to be basics, you know, right? Like, I can't have some recipes with... In complex ingredients because clearly they're not going to have that you know I do a lot of cleaning with just baking soda and white vinegar oh that's so good so that could be like I could I could put a list of things you can clean and things that you could do with yeah baking soda and vinegar that's maybe great that might be something I'd put in there and that would be something they'd have access to practical for not too expensive. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Maybe. What would you put in there? I'd probably put something along the lines of like a Southern remedy, you know, for ah. some some sort of very common cold or something that was running rampant okay. at the time. You know, whether that be allergy season or a cold that was going around. That's a or good one. something I for like bug bites. You Ooh, know, if it was yeah. summertime. You know, like something that would be... Some practical... Remedies yeah. for whatever season. And maybe that would spur others on. to They could have a whole little first aid... Yeah, yeah. Scrapbook. Yeah, there you Here's go. The, I need the first aid scrapbook. There you go. Yeah. Um, any recipes that had to do with stretching potatoes in creative ways would probably be a good thing That's to smart. put in there. That's why we have a potato cakes recipe That's that we know true. that's been preserved. Yeah. That's so fun. You also, as the librarian, were responsible for kind of maintaining these books. And right. can you imagine, first of all, you're going through icy creeks and snow and rain and the binding sometimes yeah. would be like falling apart and they yeah. would have to do repairs on the books as best they could, yeah. you know, or else I guess they could become a scrapbook because it's all going to fall apart. That's true. <laughs> anyway, I just think this is so amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So even in the sort of deconstructing, remixing of books, those even created some of these scrapbooks as well. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you think about an old book in your house that you have right now that looks like it's had its wear and tear. That would well, probably be their best one. That's That's been living in, <laughs> indoors this exactly. whole time. Uh, think about it if it's traveled through uh, snowstorms and creeks. Yeah. Well, um, I thought this was interesting, too. Um, Bibles were always available. In fact, that's often what they would um, do in read alouds and things to get mm. to get more trust built up. I read that with the people. Yes, uh, they would. You know, want them to know we're giving good content here. This yes. is not going to be something. I come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I read something that said thrill thrillers and detective stories were not allowed. Oh. So I guess flip side of that. Right. Like, you know, if you're already skeptical of the program, yeah. don't bring any murder stories up in here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they want only good, yeah. wholesome content. Wholesome content. <laughs> That's right. Just numbers wise, I have some different things I wanted to say. Okay. Uh, in, by 1937, 60,000 books were circulated each month. It's crazy. I'm assuming this is over the statewide. 
I'm not sure if that number, I'm, I'm thinking this is statewide in Kentucky. Okay. And more than 26,000 families or over half of the state had been served. My goodness. That's something. That's amazing. That. Um, the Pack Horse Library ended in 1943. So started in, I think it was more like 35. That Works Progress Administration was in 33, but I think it actually got going in 35. Okay. And then um, ended in 1943. That marked the end of the horse-delivered books in Kentucky. But by 1946, motorized bookmobiles were on the move. That is amazing that it progressed into that. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked mom if she had ever heard of the Pack Horse Librarians. And Mm -hmm. she said she had not heard of that. But that she remembers the the bookmobile coming to her little school. Oh, um, and you know that that was very exciting. Yes. So, anyway, that's fun. Who doesn't like that? Almost reminds me of the Scholastic Book Fair. Oh my when gosh! That, you know, yeah, because that's kind of our, I guess, our generation's most recent example of new yeah. book, an, an infusion of new books. It is exciting. Yeah, where you get to go and pick out a couple things and uh-huh. buy. Yeah, that's so exciting. Well, Kentucky's public libraries had 75 bookmobiles in 2014, the largest number in the nation. Oh, wow. I thought that was pretty neat that that's kind of, you know, that's pretty recent. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. There's been a lot of um, resources around this too that I found yeah um there is a great children's book I actually got my hand I I checked it out to make sure it was a good one it's called that book woman by Heather Henson and it's literally just a little you know for little children okay because oftentimes they would call them the book lady or the book woman that book woman here comes that book woman yeah (laughs) yeah exactly um and then there was another one I have not actually gotten to see my, myself that was more for like eight to 12 year olds that's called down cut shin creek yeah i had that down on my list too okay yeah. by kathy appelt and Jean canella schmitzer so if you've got an eight to 12 year old mm-hmm. you might want to let mm-hmm. them check that one out to get some history and then I found three different historical fiction books about this um I told you I read the blue woman of troublesome creek yeah book woman the book woman it talks but she's a blue woman I was gonna say it talks that's why about I called it that duh blue people in that which was a real thing I can't believe that I looked that up what to see if it was real and I'm like I, this is so wild well we might have to maybe get that's into a that subset another conversation time. yeah it's the coloring of the people from a blood from their blood Anyway. That made their skin appear blue. Yeah. Wow. Very weird. Wild. Um, That's Kim Michelle Richardson's The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. Yeah. And she's from Kentucky. So, yeah. yeah. It, I found it very interesting. Um, and a couple other historical fiction books, Along a Storied Trail. Okay. Was the title. And Gabhart. And another one called The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. 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 I don't know. I'm guessing, too. (laughs) (laughs) So if you want to hear more about that, those are all resources for various age groups. Exactly. Well, um, yeah, I just would say this was such an interesting way to empower different people that had resources to know how to share with others. Yeah. And then the government stepping in and making a way for that to happen. Because I still think it was interesting that these women paid for their own mule or horse. Right. Or rented their own, you know. that If they got stuck somewhere, you know, I, I um, can only imagine the condition. You know, can, I can see you maybe getting stuck at somebody's house if the snow came too hard and you have to leave the next morning instead. Oh, my and gosh. Can you imagine? It would be pretty, pretty interesting. Anyway. Yeah. Wild times. Wild Now, I had a conversation with a listener recently that I just thought was interesting. And she was saying she feels like a lot of the things, she she has her Foxfire books that were her father's. And she said, I feel like there's like a, a new interest in things like that with people that are even, um, 
you know, unsure about the times we live in. Like yeah. there's like a new surge of people who want to know how to can and know how to I fully agree and fully agree. Things like that, you yeah. know? Yeah. And um, I hadn't really thought of that as yeah. there being a new surge for other reasons. Right. Different but motives. all of that stuff is just good to know. It is. Yeah, it is. Our friend Lynn... Um, told me that they are um, going to be canning jellies on Saturday if I wanted to come by. And I was like, I've got to work on Saturday, but I would love. She was like, we'll be canning jelly all day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, it makes me think if if we're calling them the book woman, it makes me think of another book woman that emerged from a very poor place. Oh, my goodness. Yes. We owe a lot to Dolly Parton, our our present day book lady for her starting of the imagination library. If you haven't heard of that program. Amazing. And her father was not, he, he couldn't read. And that was kind of the source of her wanting to do this. Yeah. Just her own upbringing, her dad not being able to read, wanting to get books in the hands of people. Um, just to get them dreaming again. Exactly. I think. Is that, that's you why, think that's why I'm she assuming called it that? that's what it was. And she said her dad, I, I remember hearing her in an interview say that she felt like her dad was more proud of that than even her music career. I heard her say that too. Um, and the first book that every child gets is The Little Engine That Could. And I mm-hmm. think that's in- intentional because I think she has that in her. Just that drive of, you know, I think I can, I think I can. That's so, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think she's just, that's so in her that she just wants every child to have a chance. Yep. At that same dreaming and imagination. And she gives a free book up to age five to any registrant. So So each month. Yeah. And that's not even like, it's grown and grown and grown. So it was for her. I think it was for her county, right? Yes. In Sevier County. It launched in uh, 95. Okay. And then it was Tennessee. And then it was like, (laughs) it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. I was just looking real quick to to see. For that. Because she did get an award from the Library of Congress. Um, But I was looking to see how many like millions of books yeah. have been it, i knew it was big so last year in 2020 dolly parton's imagination library gifted its 150 millionth book wow so so those come monthly mm-hmm. from birth to five yeah yeah okay so that's 60 books a kid right yeah yeah 60 so books getting, a child yeah and it's yeah i'm just amazed knowing like that's near the area where our parents grew up also very poor mm-hmm. and um if you've ever even if you've just ever seen pictures of the little home that she grew up in with her parents and what her, was it like her tennessee eight or nine siblings what's that I don't song know. tennessee mountain home yeah i mean it was tiny yeah and can you imagine the joy if books came i, I mean they didn't so right that's why she's doing this but. yeah yeah she's even got audio and braille books oh, wow. part of the program for kids that need that that's amazing yeah 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 so we have a modern day book lady too thank you dolly yeah well uh, this is cool yeah so if you've got a good idea we, we <laughs> might cover it let us know it's steel magnolias podcast and thank you again susan for this great topic until then peace be with you And also with y'all.